Good morning. I always enjoy this time of the day to get a chance to visit with y'all. I get to share a bit of good coffee and even more so get to share a bit of the good word with you this morning. Um, drinking some Reformed Roasters, Total Depravity. Ooh, it's dark stuff, but it's good stuff. It says it's dark like the soul of man. <laughs> I'm glad that God's come across us and turned our dark hearts to him instead, but it's still a good coffee. Mm. Ooh, man into this world depraved. That's just part of the part of the nature, our, our sinful nature. But Christ has come give us a, a better nature, if you would. We become new men, new creatures in Him. Mm. Sometimes that old black coffee reminds me of those days. But that's all right. We know that He's coming back. And this bitterness of this world will be gone. Now, don't, now the coffee's not bitter. I don't drink bitter coffee. But I'm just telling you the bitterness of this world. Because this world is made up of people. And people are just naturally bitter. But Christ makes us so much better. Mm. You know, we're almost getting to the end of our book we're working through, and that's on Pastor Shane Bishop's book. That's good news. And we've come upon the part of the, today we've been working through some of the parables. And today we're in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. And if you have the book, and if you haven't, you need to get a copy of the book. But if you're in the book, we're on page 72 to 77. It's talking about the parable of the, um, sometimes it's called the, the foolish virgins. The, in, the, in the story and in the parable, the, the bridegroom, uh, the groom is coming to, to get the, everything going for the wedding, you know, and back then it would come and come in the middle of the night and catch them unaware that the, the, the bride always had to be ready, had to be prepared. Because whenever the groom's dad told him, okay, you can marry him, right then he was gone. There wasn't going to be any kind of wait or anything to it. You had to be ready. You had to be prepared. And it, they're, they're called the foolish virgins because it was at least one in the group that when the bridegroom came to her, she was not prepared. She wasn't ready. She didn't have any oil for her lamp. He came in the middle of the night. She didn't have everything ready to be able to go. And we look at it in comparison to the, 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 the Christ and his return, his soon come for us. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride of Christ. And that we will be ready when he comes. But I also begin to look at it in a few other ways, too. Are we ready for any of those God moments that come upon us? Whenever someone comes to us and they're in a need, do you have a scripture for them? Someone last night was going to pray with someone for healing. I said, can you give me some scriptures? I said, yeah, I got some right here, ready for it, ready to go. He said, well, we need to know. I need to know how to speak in boldness. I said, well, look, look, the scripture right here tells you that the Holy Spirit's going to tell you what to say. It's going to be all right. If you have the word of God in you, then you are prepared you are ready to be able to go forward but you have to do the work you have to put that word of god within you to be prepared so of, of, of utmost importance whenever christ returns are you ready are you prepared do you have well have you done everything that you need to do on your side somebody say oh we don't have to do anything well i don't we have to believe we there are some things that we do on our side have you believed in Jesus Christ? Have you confessed Jesus Christ? Have you done the other things that go along with it and showing that you've made these affirmations? Have you been baptized? Have you, um, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you fully participated in the, the preparations of this life to do everything that Christ has asked us to do so that we're able to better pour into the lives of others that are in need? You know, in this story, this, this one, she, she didn't have her oil. She wasn't ready. She couldn't light her lamp. So she asked the others, do you have any extra? They know we have enough for us. We don't have an ex enough extra. But you know what? We have enough extra to be able to share with others. We've been given a, a Christ in abundance. <clears throat> We've been given the good news in abundance, the gospel in abundance. So I want you to be quick to be able to share with others, but you have to have it before you can share it. Let me pray with you this morning. Father God, I pray right now that we be ever vigilant, looking out for those that we can pour into their lives. Lord God, let us be ready when those God moments present to us. And give us boldness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Look, you know God loves you. you got to know by now that I love you. Go out there today and make sure someone knows that you love them. And when you have the opportunity, give them some Jesus. Hey, if you can do it over a cup of coffee, even better, right? <laughs> Look, y'all have a blessed and wonderful day, and I will see y'all tomorrow.